Dear beloved internet audience, how I love thee. The topics I chose this week include 3D records, text tracking, e-tats, and more. It's March 22nd, I'm Daria, and this is the Redheaded Geek Show. <laughs> Researchers from the University of Illinois have developed this tattoo. It is printed directly onto the surface of your skin to track symptoms, measure heart rate, strain, and hydration, and then beam the info back to your doctor. This can make repeated trips to the doctor a thing of the past, and it is just one of the latest developments in the soon-to-be epidermal electronics era. Now how it works? It's simple. Ultra-thin mesh electronic circuits are printed onto flesh with a rubber stamp and work like a standard computer with electrodes, sensors, and wireless communications. And is then covered with a spray-on bandage to form a protective coating. The matrix is made of stretchy wires to move with the body. Yay, because nothing's gonna keep us ladies from doing our Pilates, right? Eh? No one? The biggest use of this ETAT, I'll call it, is the ability to monitor the healing of a wound by your doctor. But back off, big brother, these tats can only be worn about two weeks as they naturally begin to flake off. Ha ha ha. Cops, are you serial? You want US law to keep track of our text messages? Here's where some controversy comes in to my nerd news of the week. Silicon Valley firms and privacy groups want Congress to update a 1986-era electronic privacy law. Welcome to the double-edged sword of the World Wide Web. 1984. So, according to a congressional panel proposal, AT&T, Verizon, Sprint, and others would be required to capture and store Americans' private texts. Now, you may not know this, but many carriers already keep track of some of our activity. However, SMS retention policies vary drastically by carrier. The activity they do keep track of are the phone numbers associated with the text, not the content itself. However, this could drastically change since Obama has publicly called for new laws requiring ISPs to record data about their customers. An American Civil Liberties Union member stated, sure it could help catch criminals, but emergency access must be used delicately, similar to the way we would use a wiretap. True that. Either way, I think I should go ahead and erase this text message. Online music piracy doesn't hurt sales? Is that what this website just said? Okay, let me read over this real quick so it can make sense to um, anyone. Okay, I think I got it. According to the European Commission's Joint Research Center, new browsing habit research examined from 16,000 Europeans showed a positive link between online piracy and visits to legal music stores. Okay, I'm already starting to agree with this. I know when I listen to music on um, whatever, it's not your business, I am tempted to own an actual copy of it, especially if I like it. I wonder if any of you out there feel this way, because apparently the study suggests that the music industry should not see piracy as a growing concern. Now, piracy having a positive effect on music sales? Who'd have thunk it? According to the findings, they wrote, it seems the majority of music that is consumed illegally by the individuals in our sample would not have purchased if illegal downloading websites were not available to them. Interesting. Now speaking of piracy, back in the day we burned CDs, right? Today, we have the first ever 3D printed records. Picture this in your mind. The needle drops and a series of high, repetitive whines come from the album. Then, a crackling sound. Then, a muffled guitar riff. Then, what? Kurt Cobain's voice? That's right, not only are we talking about the coolest 3D printed thing in a while, but they actually work. Now, it is notable that although the revolution is amazing, the sound quality is anything but. But what can we expect? It's 3D printed on plastic. This is incredible. And watch this to see just how incredible it is. Now, I know it sounds muffled and Cobain's voice is distant and hollow, kind of like he's got a scarf covered over his mouth or something, but come on. This particular LP is part of the first batch ever of 3D printed records. Now, you guys remember playing with Legos? Not really. Just stepping on one and the excruciating pain jog your memory? Well, I grew up with Legos because my big brothers played with them all the time and I was doing the tomboy stuff, but as a result, I just fell in love with them. Now, what I'm about to show you may be too cool to handle, so hold on, watch, sit back, and relax. 
Now this is the world's first robotic Lego band. I think I watched this video about 15 times. No, seriously. The creator is an Italian music producer, Giuseppe Asito. He wanted to take a step forward in the world of impressive Lego creationism. He built this fully functional working band called the Toya Mata Band, made up of several tiny robotic Lego figures programmed to play instruments. Adorable, uh, adorable as it is to say, each member of the band is rigged with rubber bands and pulleys. Their arms are controlled by an Arduino Uno connected to an iPad running Nordbeat. Then, the tiny bots perform MIDI sequences by hitting the instruments when prompted. Can we watch it again? Please? Well, that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Leave comments below. Bye.